Hi guys, I thought I'd share with you uh, this little set that I bought today. Uh, I got this for $10 of Gumtree. This is an Australian 14-inch Mitsubishi CRT with composite input only and a mono speaker. What was, I thought what is interesting is that these are not speaker vents. Um, the speaker is actually mounted down to the bottom so yeah while the speaker is with reasonable size uh, for the side of the tv um I'm, I'm not sure it's gonna sound very well so um the idea of uh this video is to show the process of identifying uh whether this set can be rgb modded uh or not and um specifically the the multiple ways that you can rgb mod uh, sets so um, traditionally people have hacked into the OSD uh, but there are other ways as well uh, sometimes there's a non-use port uh, for SCART and that already has the, um, the RGB uh, wiring and components sometimes uh, there's an unused teletext uh, or closed caption uh, connector in there um, or you can disable a board if the board's already there you don't want teletext so there are multiple ways to do it um, but we're going to take a look. So, um, a few other details about the TV. Um, it has a Toshiba tube. It's a 34 centimeters, starting with A, which means it's a consumer grade tube, obviously. A couple of things that I noticed um, is you can see here at the back there's actually a pin um, there's some soldering points for a RGB SCART sorry for a SCART connector uh, that is not wired up unfortunately I traced um, the RGB pins the ones with the black mark here um, and they go absolutely nowhere so I'm positive that this uh, this SCART connector is actually only for composite this pin here which is actually connected and the blanking pin that's pretty much anything that's connected on that whole thing and you'll have audio as well obviously so unfortunately that's pretty much useless we could put a panel mount connector there but um, making a hole in the plastic that's aligned with it is going to be fairly hard there's no marking at all um, on either side of where the hole should go so I think it'd be easier to mount um, a female connector with some screw holes and you know uh, rather than panel mount it, mount it so unfortunately the idea with this TV what, what was the challenge is that I couldn't find a service manual so I had to manually um, trace from the jungle ic the rgb pins so first identify the jungle ic pull the data sheet i'll show you so on this particular tv the jungle ic was here it's a mitsubishi chip it's a m52340 sp pulled the data sheet of that one and found that it had um RGB external inputs and a blanking pin. The blanking pin is basically where you input a certain voltage to tell the, the chip to set, um, you know, to switch to the, the RGB input. And as pretty common, this particular input is used for OSD. This TV has OSD. And there's actually a chip on the underside of the TV quite far over there that is an SMD OSD controller. So what I did is I took my multimeter, I traced um, those pins. Uh, it was quite hard because you're basically navigating in the dark trying to find points that beep. And I traced it out on a piece of paper. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the results because I was able to kind of make sense of how it's wired. And I think we'll be able to um, to mod this uh, this RGB set uh, this TV set for RGB. So I'll show you my horrible uh, little diagram here. So these are the pins on the jungle IC this this IC here uh, for RGB RGB 
and FB fast blanking. So the one where you input the voltage. And, um, you know, tracing it up, I found some jumpers and then I found three capacitors. Uh, these capacitors are 0.1 microfarad at 50, rated at 50 volt. This is pretty common. Um, I've seen that on other sets as well. And it's pretty common of a wiring between the OSD and the, the jungle IC. So these were uh, actually electrolytic, uh, you know, uh, through hole capacitors. Uh, on other sets, I've seen very small ceramic, SMD ceramic ones. Um, so this is something different, a rated at 50 volts, which is, which is quite a bit. Um, and they also are, these from those capacitors, they are terminated to 75, uh, through 75 ohm resistors to ground. That's also something I've seen on other sets and, and uh, Sony sets uh, uh, that I've looked at for RGB modding and modded. And all of this is actually termin not really terminated, but connected to an empty connector, uh, which has the name CN902. So basically there's big, big holes and it should have like a, you know, one of those uh, connectors to it with pins, but nothing's connected to it. So it's obviously an unused feature, if you will, of this particular chassis. And then from then on, you got three resistors. They are all 6.2K. One thing that I wanted to note that I found quite interesting is two of them are SMD and one of them is true hole, true hole which makes no sense. They have the exact same value, um, but yeah, so they're somewhere in the back here. And from there, it's connected directly to the OSD chip. Uh, the fast blanking is connected through a diode uh, and also a resistor, a 1.8 kilo ohm resistor to the OSD chip. So by connecting the RGB lines here, um, we should be able to input a signal um, directly to the TV. Um, most likely we'll have to disconnect um, to disconnect the, the lines from the OSD IC. Otherwise there's gonna be some conflict going on there. Um, the, all this information, everything that I learned about this was from a thread on Schmups. And uh, some guys there have recently found a way to mux the uh, OSD and the RGB input. So that's something I haven't fully looked into yet. But basically what that does is that you don't have to use a, a mechanical switch to disable the OSD. You can use both at the same time. It's a lot more, a much, much more cleaner way to... Um, to do things so this is it for this part of the rgb modding of this set and um, in part two we'll test the theory out and see how we go